Hey gang, this is Jay from JTech and today I'm going to be talking about a topic that's been on my mind for the last four and five years and that has come to light in the recent um, in the recent time that I've gotten myself a new phone. It's, it's more or less of a thought process that has gone into this video and I will be talking about why I personally think that portable gaming devices are on the way out of the technology industry. Now, I really think that is a very risky thing to talk about right now, but I'm I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash, but this is personally my opinion on what I think is going to happen to dedicated machines like the PlayStation Vita and Nintendo 3DS when they come face to face with uh, tablets and smartphones, i.e. the iPhone, the iPad, etc., etc. In the last three years, we've noticed a surge of applications dedicated to playing high-end video games on Android and iOS devices. This has been seen in studies showing that iOS apps and Android apps have seen a high surge of production going to them compared to the likes of the Nintendo 3DS and PlayStation Vita applications. I'm going to give a few reasons why I think that video gaming on dedicated handhelds might be on the way out. Personally, portable games are fantastic devices and I don't see them just dying in a snap. Just in the future, I see possibly them being integrated as smartphones and tablets in general. But here are a few reasons why I think that this is going to be the case. Um, affordability. Now, this is a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, when the PlayStation Vita launched in 2011, it was touted as this revolutionary gaming system that combined touchscreens, 3G technology, and even large screen. With the PlayStation Vita incorporating 3G and Wi-Fi technology, it was seen as possibly the portable that would carry gaming forward into the next stratosphere. Sadly, that hasn't been the case, and Nintendo, with the Nintendo 3DS, stormed sales and have been storming sales ever since. Compare this to smartphones, which have seen a large, large number of people joining the internet. Developers have seen this market as a possible goldmine, and developing games for smartphones that have capabilities of running these of running these high-end games. Now, the affordability of a smartphone can range from about as close to a thousand dollars to as cheap as fifty dollars. It depends on the performance you'll get out of fifty-dollar smartphones, which I would love for you to stay away, to stay away from. Although I'm recording this on a fifty-dollar smartphone, yeah, hypocritical. But when you when you drop down into the smartphones, especially coming into the Android world, smartphones can process high-end video games at fantastic rates even for a cheap price. For example, the NVIDIA Shield tablet, which costs $250, has a quad-core NVIDIA Tegra K1 processor with 2 gigs of RAM and a 1080p display. It's a fantastic device, and it's a dedicated tablet device that comes with a video gaming gamepad. Many people have gone against touchscreen gaming because of the poor controls and the rather half-assed games. Pardon my French. It's been noticed lately that most game developers are targeting smartphones because of the large and wide range market that's available for them. Portable games are cannot compare to smartphones in terms of sales and market width because smartphones are an all-round technology that perform just apart from calling, texting and taking pictures and even reviewing simple apps, they can perform high-end tasks comparable to that of previous generation consoles i.e. the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. The prices of the Nintendo 3DS and the PlayStation Vita have dropped significantly on Amazon. Could this be seen as possible competition from the likes of the iPhone, the Galaxy phones, and many other devices out there? Yes, it could be seen as such, because many people are targeting these very things. And not all persons can afford buying games for as much as $40 and going high. Nintendo 3DS games are a bit cheap, but tend to lack high-end quality the way PlayStation Vita games do. And even though both of these dedicated gaming devices have fantastic software titles going for them, many people are seemingly flocking to the smartphone because of free games that provide high-end graphics and cheap games that really don't have to break the bank for anyone. You can see that either way. You can afford a really cheap smartphone or either of these consoles. But either way, affordability is probably a reason why I'm seeing smartphones overtaking handheld gaming. Number two is flexibility. Now with gaming devices they're just focused on gaming. Would you rather have a gaming console that looks exactly like a gaming console or a dedicated device that just looks pretty much like a tablet or a smartphone that can be turned into literally anything. It could be your office work, it could be your gaming console, it could be your media player. Anything can be possible with a tablet. With the PlayStation Vita however, 
it's just pretty much a gaming console that looks like a gaming console and yes it can perform other multimedia tasks but it just won't convince many people to fully embrace the device as a general media player. I remember when the PlayStation Portable came out about 12 years ago, it was a fantastic device that brought, that brought forth to gaming, media playing, photo streaming, web browsing, and all these things. Now, with the availability of 3G, 4G even, it's possible to connect these devices at a much wider scale. Tablets and smartphones have this in their arsenal. They can not only be dedicated gaming consoles, but can be just much more than that. And flexibility is also a good thing in terms of why gaming consoles, portable gaming consoles, are not being embraced as they were a couple of years ago. And the third reason that I can give here is market share. Smartphones constitute up to almost 2 billion of the computing market, in, of the worldwide computing market. And this is no surprise, seeing the likes of Electronic Arts, um, Activision in the future, rumored to be in the future, and Ubisoft putting most of their titles onto iOS and Android app markets. Many gamers who deny this and say these are just half-assed games that don't really offer much in terms of story mode and gameplay, but rather just simple games that just are time killers. Well, while this is mostly true, some good titles have come onto the Android Play Store and the iOS App Store. So market share for these developers is a pretty big deal. As long as people get to see their games, people download their games, get to play their games, it's going to matter much. In the last three years or so, it's been noticed that more money has been spent developing iOS and Android games than it has been spent to develop Nintendo 3DS and PlayStation Vita titles. Now, why I think portable handhelds are just going to not vanish off the face of the earth is because, well, this is probably going to be a main reason, and that is in-app purchases. Now, a game could be free. A game could be free, of course. It could look great, fantastic graphics, fantastic gameplay stories, but at some point on your phone or tablet, you will find a struggle in the game, and you might use the whole mini-transaction, microtransaction type um, approach. But this has been seen as a rather backhanded approach to, in when it comes to mobile gaming, and that's what has thrown many pro gamers off mobile gaming scene as just time killing, time time wasting, um, a time wasting gimmick that won't go far. Graphics could be great, but in-app purchases have are really are an annoying thing. And even paid apps do come with a few caveats when it comes to in-app purchases. They can come with 99 cents for clearing a certain level or even buying out certain packs when it comes to racing games or sports games. And for example, uh, the FIFA 15 Ultimate Team game which is pretty much it's no longer the way previous FIFA titles were on both iOS and Android, where you download the game and play it there and then. It's an online-based ultimate team, which most FIFA players are familiar with. In-app purchases are a double-edged sword. They're, they are seen as a good thing, as in a game could be free, and you could use the microtransaction way of life. That could that could be a good thing. The bad thing is you get half-baked games, and you can and the game will become intentionally hard. Developers are rumored to make these games intentionally hard in order to force you to use your money to buy power-ups, to unlock full versions, etc, etc. I feel that in-app purchases are the mobile equivalent of DLC, in a way. I, I, I feel it's like that. And they are the mobile equivalent of DLC. It could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Either way, it depends on how he wants to view it. But this is another good reason why... Um, Portable gaming could still have a lifeline. When you can just buy a $40 game, which is expensive, you can just buy a $40 game, play it on your PlayStation Visa, play it on your 3DS, and you don't have to worry about anything apart from sequels and other things. Verdicts. Do I think portable gaming consoles are on the way down because of smartphones and tablets? You can't help but look at the facts, look at the numbers. It is going to happen at some point. They might just phase out or there could be rumors of Nintendo making a Nintendo phone. We you know Sony make the Xperia, make Xperia smartphones, so it it wouldn't be much of a much of a marketing strategy for them to ditch the PlayStation Vita and then start making a PlayStation Vita phone. It would be funny because we already had something like that with the Xperia Play, which was pretty much a flop. Do I see portable games dying out in the future? Maybe, maybe, but as long as in-app purchases are there, as long as poor controls, 
still dominate um, touchscreen control touchscreen games I I don't I don't see portable gaming dying for sure so that's my verdict and this was just a really quick video that I wanted to talk about so uh, thank you guys for watching shout out to all the guys who provided extra content that you're seeing from this video I'm going to post links to their channels right below you gotta check them out subscribe to these guys they're fantastic inspirations for this channel and many other channels so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you like and comment and um, give me reasons do you think yourself that portable games are going to die out because of smartphones and tablets I'd love to see your views down there this has been Jay from Jay Tech, and I will see you guys next time